You know, what I like about that Christian song, watching his parents' face. Yeah. That, was, that made this song uh, so much more. How many of you can remember the year 1953? Stand up. You can remember the year 1953 anyway. For a few of us here, right? Okay. That was the year that Boise, Idaho, and the Treasure Valley changed. July 12th, 1953, KIDO Television Channel 7 came the first oh. time. <laughs> uh, I remember that day well. Seriously, I do. Black and white TV. We had a television set stored in our shed for almost a year before television came to Idaho. <laughs> we pulled it out on July 12, 1953, and we started the scene. Now, I need some help here. Can I just divide this in half, right, like here to here? Can you guys say, hey, hey, what do you say? Hey, 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 hey what do you say? Good. Can you guys say, hi ho, what do you know? Hi ho, what do you know? Hi ho, what do you know? Oh, that's a beautiful sound. <laughs> I love that sound almost more than life itself. Can any of you that were alive in 1953 remember that sound? No. No. Nope. Hey, 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 what do you know? Hi ho, where do you go? Or something like that. Can't remember it anymore. Hey, hey, what do you say? Hi ho! Oh, when I hear that sound, I'd run to the television because my favorite commercial was on. Howdy Doody? No, it wasn't Howdy Doody. I did like Howdy Doody. But the very next thing it says, Get yourself a powerhouse candy bar! Yay! Oh, I love that sound of a powerhouse candy bar. It was in a red, white, but mostly blue package. Beautiful, beautiful package. Had a boy on it, running faster than the wind, I know. I was so excited, I just would get anything to have a powerhouse candy bar. They cost a nickel. Four ounces of candy bar, bigger than the candy bars they have today. The biggest one I could find is like three and a half. These are four ounce candy bars for a nickel. Yep. Oh, I was a, from a poor family, of course. <laughs> So I went out and I started collecting pop bottles, yep. beer bottles, and took them down and traded them in. And finally I had five, five big pennies. <laughs> I went down to the local store. They didn't have a power house candy bar. <laughs> oh, my heart was broken. I got my mom to take me downtown Boise. That was big in those days. We went to three different stores. <laughs> no powerhouse candy bars. Well, July went, August, September, October. We started talking about Thanksgiving and Christmas, and those commercials would come on TV, and I still wanted that. Oh. And we start talking about what we're going to want for Christmas. And all I wanted for Christmas was a power bar. Can you imagine that? I was now seven years old. I was six when I first heard about this, but now I was seven. <coughs> seven year old, all he wanted for Christmas was one five cent powerhouse candy bar. Oh, that would make my world. But I knew they didn't really exist. Well, Christmas came. They started opening up presents at my house. I was number two because I was second to the youngest to open the presents. So I get them second. And all of a sudden, everybody just watched. And I was 
not really excited because I, I didn't really want anything for Christmas. The only thing I wanted was oh, a flower out of candy bar and they didn't make them in Idaho. I started opening my present. What was in that? box wasn't shaped like this. It was a box. I opened it up and <laughs> I looked at it and it was red, white, and blue and there was a little boy on it running. Oh, I was so excited. Have you ever been in a moment that you wanted to last forever? <laughs> that was one. I couldn't believe it. My aunt, who I don't ever remember meeting because it was right after the war and she had been in the service that whole time and, and I had never met her, but she was coming back and my parents wrote her a letter telling them how important that I was to them and that she would buy a powerhouse candy bar for me for my one Christmas present and she bought a whole box of them. <laughs> Kid could be that happy. I didn't even know I, oh, one of the things it says. <laughs> they were scrumptiously delicious. <laughs> Can you imagine how good that was? Scrumptiously. That's better than anything I've ever had. So I gently ripped it open. I smelled it. I got ready to take my first bite and everybody was just I met my mom had tears. I mean everybody was just looking they just couldn't believe I they did this for me. child. <laughs> that was by far the worst thing I've ever put in my mouth. I just can't believe that they lied. I've been watching TV for six months and they lied in it and they ruined my Christmas. My one Christmas present. <laughs> Not that day, but later as I think about it. Could you imagine people sacrificing for you to get you what you wanted for more than life itself? And they did that. And that's why this is one of my favorite Christmas stories. And I hope they choke on it. <laughs> 